Okay, we're going to take a look at some more measures of spread now. We've talked about a couple of them so far. We have range and spread itself, but these all fall under that last S in our socks. So a measure of spread describes how similar or varied the set of observed values are for a particular data set. Typical measures of spread are the variance, standard deviation, spread, range, and IQR. And we will discuss IQL, IQR um, when we talk about measures of location. Okay, so IQR will pop up in spread and location. So we'll, we'll get to that in, a, in the next page or so. Uh, but if you look, we have five measures of spread that we'll talk about in this class. So variance, standard deviation, spread, range, and IQR. You only need to quote me one of them. My personal faves, I like standard deviation and range. Uh, I'm a pretty big fan of IQR as well. I usually don't quote the spread or variance. It's not that I couldn't. I just typically go with the other three. So let's take a look at some data sets, just very general data, no context to them. So look at these three sets of data. All three have the same mean and median. So their mean is 45 and their median is 45. They're perfectly symmetric. So things are symmetric when the mean and median are the same. And you can look at these, these data sets, they are symmetric. You can see the line of symmetry scooting down the middle here. If we look at this first data set, it looks like I've got a data value of 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Here I've got 20, and then maybe 45, 49, or excuse me, if this is 40. So we've got 20, this would be, I don't know, 42, 43, maybe this is 46, 47, this is 70. Here they're all really scrunched in, right? 40, 42, 43, 45, 46, 47, 50. So we've got these three data sets. And if we take a look just through the lens of center, we have the same stats coming out, mean and median. But these three data sets are different. So we need other statistics so that we can talk about why they are different. So here I ask, calculate their spread and range, what is similar about them and what is different about them. So let's just take a look at data set one for right now. And calculate its spread and its range. So for data set one, okay, what is the spread? So if I look at the spread, it looks like I'm going from 20 to 70. I don't have any units on this problem. And this wasn't a word problem. This was just some general data so we could run through these definitions. If the spread is uh, 20 to 70, that makes the range 50. Okay, let's look at data set two. Okay, so the, for data set two, it still looks like the low and high, the spread is still 20 to 70. All right, and that will keep the range, we've got the same range, 50. All right, let's go to data set three. Okay, so we've got the spread that we need to talk about and we need to talk about the range. So for data set three, if I'm taking a look, it looks like the spread is 40 to 50. So finally we have some difference, 40 to 50. That would make the range 10, because again, we're just gonna subtract those two numbers. Okay. I'm gonna put a little vertical break there. So in terms of answering the questions asked of me, I did calculate their spread and range. It's asking me what is similar about them and what is different about them. So we wanna get into the habit of answering all the questions asked of us. So in terms of what's similar, what would I say is similar about all three of these, these data sets? So things that I noticed that are similar uh, we were originally told that all three have the same mean and median. So I'm going to point that out. That's what one thing that's similar to all three data sets. Another thing that popped up while we were calculating the spread and range is that data set one and data set two actually have the exact same spread and range.
right, so there I am putting that into a sentence. So I wrote or two sentences. All three data sets have the same mean and median. Data sets one and two have the same spread and range. So there I've answered what they are similar or what is similar about them. Let's think about what is different about them. Okay, so I can go for, well, they don't all have the exact same spread and range. That's true. That's something that's different between all three of them. But let's also just go and look at these three data sets again. So when I look at these three data sets and I start to really contemplate, okay, what's different about them? I think the way that these points are spaced out is what's different, right? Data set three, they're very clumped. They're, they're close to the mean and median. They're all in this tight little 40 to 50. Um, um, spread there. Here, there, we've got the outer points, but then these are clumped up in here. They're clustered, where this is just like uniformly spread out. So the data points are positioned differently along those x-axes, all right? So they're different distances from the mean and median. So that's what I'm going to put in terms of what I really see as their differences. So the data points are positioned differently. Positioned. in all three data sets. All right. The dots are different distances from the mean or if you want to say median, because they're the same thing, doesn't matter. The same thing in this particular problem, not always. Okay, so we've got an idea of that. And and where this is heading towards is if we were just gonna talk about measures of spread being only spread and range, it's not enough. There are too many times when data sets have the same spread, same range, but they really have different, different things going on with them. And what I mean by that is, again, let's compare data set one and two. Data sets one and two had the same mean, the same median, the same spread, the same range. And if we were only looking at those four statistics, nowhere in that information is it conveyed that they, these data values are spread out differently. And that's why statisticians went beyond spread and range, and they came up with this, this fancier term, this fancier statistic called a standard deviation. So this is a much more universally used stat. We call it standard deviation, and we're going to go through its official definition in a moment. But I want us to just try and break this down. Okay, so let's ignore the word standard for right now. And let's think about the word deviation. So how would you use deviation in your real life? Forget stats, just a, a real life example of, if I said deviate, what does that make you think of? So when I hear the word deviate, I think go off a of path, um, whatever the, the normal route is, go a little bit around that. So you're, you're going off of some path. When we talk about deviating in statistics, we're talking about deviating from the mean. Okay, so the mean's a very important stat. When we talk about deviating, we're talking about deviating from the mean. Let me give you an example. Let's do this, um, this example like I had mentioned before about um, the first grade on the, or your, your grade on the first midterm. So imagine I had 30 students again, okay? And student number one, well actually let me back this up. So I had 30 students and I crunched that the, and I'm gonna put this on the side here just so we don't lose, um, lose track of what I'm saying. And keep in mind, this is just the total made up numbers. So let's say the average on midterm one, when we wind up taking it, is an 80, okay? So the average score on midterm one is an 80. And again, I'm making this up. But let's say I picked a student at random. So student number one scored 85, okay? So student number one didn't score the average, which is fine. And we could also say student number one deviated from the mean by five points. So this student's deviation 
is plus five. And we'll, we'll, we'll pick apart why I'm writing plus five. It becomes important later. All right, so student number one scored 85, so I want you to hear that they deviated from the mean by five points. Let's say, say I picked another student at random, student number two. Okay, that student scored 70. Okay. Now that student also did not score the exact average, which is fine. All right, that student deviated from the mean, but this student's deviation was minus 10. And why do the plus and minus become important? Because positive deviations mean you score above average. Negative deviations imply that you scored below average. And who's to say if you want a positive or negative deviation? It depends on the context of the problem. If we're talking about a midterm, you probably want a positive deviation. I would love if for one time in my life, uh, if I went into the doctor's, I had a negative deviation when they weigh me, but that never seems to happen. That's, that's okay, I, I've almost come to grips with it. Uh, so we've got this going on. Let's say I had even a third student. And let's say this student actually scored 80, okay? What would this student's deviation be? It would be zero, which is fine, okay? And zero, neither, it's neither positive nor negative. So when we talk about deviating in stats, we're talking about deviating from the mean. And you can imagine, so far, I only have these three students I've, I've kind of made up. We had a deviation of positive five, then negative 10, then zero. And if I had a class of 30, I could go through and I could find everybody's deviation, right? So plus five, minus 10, zero, maybe two, negative seven, one, 18, whatever it is. And you can also start to hear that every student, in addition to scoring, some kind of some kind of number on the midterm, they also produce a deviation. I, in addition to these 30 data points I'm gonna get from their midterm scores, I'm also gonna get 30 deviations from them. And what I can do is I can take the average of those deviations, and that's what we're gonna call the standard deviation. All right, so in stats, when we deviate, we're deviating from the mean. Everybody deviates from the mean unless you happen to actually score on the mean, and that's fine. Most of us deviate from the mean, whether we're above or below. And out of all of those deviations, I can take the average of that deviation, and we're gonna call that the standard deviation. Now there's a little bit more to it than just averaging the deviations. We're gonna see that on the next example. Something goes wrong, and then statisticians fix it, all that fun stuff, but that's the gist of it, is that everyone deviates so we can take the average of those deviations and we find the standard deviation. Now, how do we write the deviations up as symbols? So we write them as your data value minus the sample mean, data value minus the sample mean, data value minus the sample mean. And we saw this play out right here. Student number one scored an 85, and the average was 80, so that deviation was five, right? Student number two scored a 70. The average was 80. That student had a deviation of negative 10. Student number three scored an 80. The deviation, excuse me, the mean was 80. That deviation was zero. So these might look funky. This is a fancy stats symbols for just find the deviations. Take your score, subtract the mean. Your score, subtract the mean. How much did you deviate? And when we get to the next example, we're gonna break this down. We're gonna find all sorts of stats, all sorts of deviations, and we're gonna go ahead and find that standard deviation. You're gonna see something go wrong, and then I'm gonna show you what we have to do to fix it. And just buckle up, it's a good time. Okay, let's start to really get into this and see if we can start crunching some of those numbers. So here we go. When I read this, again, let's try and identify what is the variable in this problem. So a statistics student is interested in the number of Facebook friends that college students have. She randomly selects 12 students and asks them how many Facebook friends they have. The student is going to use the data obtained below to make estimates about all of the students at her college. The number of Facebook friends is shown below. All right, and we see some data points here, some data values. Calculate the mean, median, and deviations for the set. What is the average deviation? Okay, so I have a lot to do, but let's start with what is the variable? Okay, we know she's taking a random sample of 12 students, but again, what is she asking them? 
their height, their weight, if they ate an apple, do they like, I don't know, what's a popular show right now, Stranger Things? What are, what is the variable? And you look at this 420, 199, 29, what does that represent? Well, we can see the, the, the wording here, right? Number of Facebook friends, okay? So we've got a discrete numerical variable. And let's just take a look at this data, get some feels for it. So we see 420, good for you. 30, okay, that's a little on the low end, at least in this data set, no judgment. Uh, if I had to kind of take a guess, right, we see 420, 200, basically 289. I feel like the center is somewhere around 200. Right, I've got a, a few folks below 200. Right? But then I've got a few folks above, well not hit this one, but a few folks above 200 and some of these are significantly above 200. That's pretty close. So I'm just going to put off to the side here. I feel like X bar is around 200 Facebook friends. I just want to get some gut feelings for this. Okay. Well, I don't know if you can see my handwriting there. I'll scooch that down. So I think that X bar is around 200 Facebook friends. Now this says calculate the mean, median, and deviations. I've got 12 data points. I don't wanna calculate the mean and median by hand, so I'm gonna just go ahead and do that on my calculator. So like always, time to put some data into L1. I'm sure I have something else in there from the last problem. Oh, I don't. Okay, great, let's put this in. Okay. And like always, I like to check and make sure I have the right number of observations. Um, I believe she took a random sample of 12 students and it's sure enough, my 13th entry is my first blank one. So as long as I didn't make a typo here, I should be good to go. So let me go run one of our stats to find the mean and median. I'm gonna go back to my home screen. So we do stat calc, right? and we're gonna go option one, and then just tell your calculator where to look. So I'm looking at L1. I can see right here that the mean, I wasn't too far off, right? The mean's about 211.9 Facebook friends, or almost 212. So let me write that down. So I know X bar is officially 211.9. I'll go three decimals, 917 Facebook friends. Okay. You don't have to go three decimals and stats. You can go however many decimals you want. Sometimes I do three. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little crazy. It is a Thursday evening. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down. There's my median. So my median is 176 Facebook friends. Okay. So since these two numbers are not the same, I don't have a symmetric data set. It's, it's pretty rare that you have something that's exactly symmetric. We, we usually get something that might be roughly symmetric, but we're gonna talk about symmetry a little bit later. All right, the next thing that I'm getting asked to do, right? It says calculate the mean, calculate the median, but calculate the deviations. So this is gonna take a little while. So as I start to try and play this out, I've got to calculate 12 deviations. And if you remember what we said on the previous page, in stats, when we talk about deviations, we're deviating from the mean. So if I look at this first student, right? This student deviated from the mean by around 210 Facebook friends, right? If I'm just approximating, because this student was at 420, the mean was at 2, 212. So about really 208 Facebook friends. This student deviated from the mean in that this student was under the mean by about, I don't know, 12 Facebook friends. So this first student would have a positive deviation, the second student would have a negative deviation, right? Positive, 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 negative, 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 uh, positive, negative, negative, negative. I gotta go crunch all those numbers, so I've got a bunch of work to do. So let me push this, this up, and I'm gonna try and calculate all of those deviations.
All right, so give me a moment. This is going to be fun. All right, that is a lot, right? So, okay, I've calculated the mean, 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 median deviations. And then it says, what is the average deviation? So before I actually crunch all of this on my calculator, let me just get a feel for it. Um, if I'm looking at this, what we got 208, 1277, like that. I, if I had to guess, and I'm just spitballing this right here, I think, and I'm just gonna put this off to the side here, all right, so if I had to guess, I would say that the average deviation was maybe around 90 or 100, right? 90, 100, that one's a little on the small side. This one's pretty large, pretty large, 100. Yeah, I'm gonna say that I think the average deviation is around 100 Facebook friends, if I'm just kind of guesstimating here, all right? And when we try and do this, right, if I wanted to actually add these up, here's where this problem is gonna present itself. So if you go onto your calculator and you add these 12 deviations together, all right, because you have positives and negatives, things are gonna to start to cancel out. So this positive 200 will get canceled almost by this negative 181, right? If you took the negative 181 and the negative 12, you'd almost completely cancel that out. Right? If I think of positive 77, it'll almost get canceled out by negative 68. Right? Positive 100 will almost get canceled out by negative 90. But go ahead and take a moment and add those numbers up on your calculator. Okay? And the reason we wanna do this is because if we wanna find the average deviation, we add these 12 numbers up, divide by 12. Right? So if I wanna officially, I'll put this over here. All right, if I want, the average deviation or the standard deviation, I want to add these up and divide by 12. And I want to divide by 12 because there are 12 data points. So when you add all of these up, and just trust me on this, you put these into your calculator, you're going to get negative 0.004. So you add these 12 numbers up, they add up to something pretty close to zero. When you divide that by 12, you get negative 0.0003 Facebook friends. So if we follow this formula, right? If we add these 12 numbers up, divide by 12, because we want the average deviation, we get an average deviation of pretty much zero. And that's a problem, all right? Think, when I did it in my head, I thought it should be closer to 100. And if you look at this, this data set, these students aren't deviating by zero. They're deviating by all sorts of numbers, right? This deviation again was 208, then 12, then 77. But what happens in this process where things go wrong is that because we have positives and negatives, things start canceling out. And that's why when things cancel out, we get a number really, really close to zero here. And actually, if you didn't do any rounding, you would get zero exactly. So when you get this zero and you divide it by your sample size, you wind up with zero and that's just, it's not the right statistic. And stats folks were a little bit dumbfounded. They were like, well, how do we get around this? Well, the workaround is just that much more fun. So what we decided to do 
instead of adding all of these numbers up and dividing by 12 and having the canceling happen, we took all of these numbers, we squared them, okay? And if you remember back from your math days, anytime you square a number, it becomes positive automatically. So we squared this number, squared this number, squared this number. We squared all of these numbers, all right? And then we added them up and divided not quite by 12, by 11. And I'll explain why we divide by 11 and not 12 when we get uh, later on down the chapter. It's something called degrees of freedom. But we divide by 11, okay? And then, since we squared all of these numbers to make sure that they weren't positive, excuse me, that they were positive, since we squared them, made them all positive, got the average of those squared numbers, then we square rooted at the end to get back to the, the statistic we actually want. So if you weren't catching me on what I was trying to convey, so if we added these up as is, the positives and the negatives cancel out. So we are gonna square each deviation. And we're gonna make those numbers positive. Then we're gonna take the average. And when we take the average this time, we won't get any canceling because every number will be positive. But since we squared everything, we also have to undo that. And if you remember back from your math days, what undoes is squaring a square root. Then take square root. Okay. And that's what we're gonna do on the next page. All right, so here we will officially pick up variance and standard deviation. So when you hear variance, we're gonna give it this symbol. We're gonna call it S squared. Okay, it's the sum of the squared deviations all right, divided by n minus one. And again, I'll talk about why we're going with n minus one a little bit later. If you look at all of this, this looks like ugly notation, but let's break it down. Again, this means sum, okay? It's that capital sigma. This here is a deviation. So we're gonna take all of our deviations, we're going to square them. Then we're gonna take their average, or I should say their almost average. We're not gonna divide by n, we're gonna divide by n minus one. All right, so we'll take every deviation, we will square it, add them all together, divide by n minus one, and that's gonna be a statistic called the variance. So again, to just kind of reiterate what I was talking about here, we're gonna take all of these deviations that we just looked at, we're gonna square each deviation. That's what this symbol is asking, all right? Then we're gonna take the average, or I should say the almost average, we're not just gonna divide by um, n, we're gonna divide by n minus one, but to get that average, we're gonna add all of those squared numbers, those squared deviations together, divide by n minus one, and then to get back down to the standard deviation rather than the variance, right? The variance is s squared. We wanna go from s squared to s. We're gonna take that square root. So the sample standard deviation is the positive square root of the sample variance and it's denoted by s. And I know that's a lot to take in, but let's try and crunch this out, okay? So I wanna calculate the sample variance, sample standard deviation. Here we go. So S squared, the variance, right? I'm gonna do this one first. So if I wanna do the variance, I need to take every uh, deviation and square it. So that first student had a deviation of 208.3, so, or 208.083. I'm gonna square that number I'm gonna to add to it the second student's deviation of negative 12.917 squared. And I'm gonna do that for every student. Every student has a deviation. Now I'm a little lazy, so you're gonna see me do the plus dot, dot, dot. We do this oftentimes in math. So this is the first student, second student, third student. It's implied that I'm gonna do it for students four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 and I will just end with 12. So negative 58.917, and I will square that number, okay? So I'm taking all of the deviations, and I am squaring them. This makes these numbers positive, right? So there's no more sums positive, some are negative, they're all positive. I am adding them together, you see the plus signs here, and then I want to divide that number by n minus one. N was our sample size, we had 12 students, in our sample, so I'm going to divide by 11 for this problem. Whatever this number is, okay? 
and it's gonna be gigantic, all right, because we're squaring these numbers. They're getting that much larger. Whatever this number is, that is our sample variance. Now just trust me, when I crunch this on my calculator, we get 15,873.720, all right? That is, that number right there is your sample variance. All right, technically it's units, our Facebook friends squared. We don't need to worry about units because they just, they don't really make sense when you're talking about sample variance. It makes sense when you head back down to the standard deviation. So in terms of the standard deviation, once you find the variance, once you squared everything, so you're no longer dealing with positives and negatives, everything's positive, and you take that average, even though, again, it's at a funky average, we're not dividing by the sample size, but sample size minus one. When you do all of that, that is your variance, okay? Now, to get to standard deviation, all right, if I want the sample standard deviation, I need to take the square root of this number, on my calculator. So I will go to my trusty calculator and I will say, hey, can you give me the square root? Now, if you haven't noticed your square root button before, it's over your x squared key, but in my, for my particular calculator, it's blue. So I need to hit the blue key first to get that symbol to pop up. So I hit square root, 15,873.720. And I'm looking at a sample standard deviation of 125.991. Now, the standard deviation does have units. It's the units of our, of our problem. It's Facebook friends. That was our variable. So this is your sample standard deviation. Okay. So I'm going to run through this. Oops, excuse me. I hit my my board there. Um, I'm going to run through this again and let's try and think about where we started and where we are now. Okay, so I gave you some data. That was the first thing, believe it or not. Gave you some data, identified the variable. We plugged this into our calculator. We ran one variable stats, right? If you remember doing this all the way, I plugged it in our calculator, said, hey, let's go run one variable stats. We see our mean there. You see your median here, that was where we started. Okay. Then I asked you to find deviations. And this required a lot of number crunching because deviations, they're the distance from the mean. So we took the first student's Facebook friends, subtracted the average. Second student's Facebook friends, subtracted the average. So when we did this, this part of the example, we got positive and negative deviations, which is true for every data set. For every data set, some people are below the mean and some people are below the mean. Uh, some people are above the mean and some people are below the mean. Because again, the mean is in the middle, so some people are above the middle, some people are below the middle. The problem popped up here in that when we tried to take the averages of the deviations, these averages always shot out to zero, and we knew that the real deviations weren't zero, so we were getting this number that was faulty. So what statisticians opted to do is they said, well, if we keep adding these and they add to zero because of the positives and negatives, let's just square every deviation, then take the average, then take the square root. And that's what you saw us doing over on this page, right? I took all of the deviations, I squared them to make them positive. I added them together, took their average, right? And then I square rooted it to get that sample standard deviation. And I don't know if you, you noticed this, okay? But on one of our stats, maybe you're seeing that that number right there, 125.991, is hanging out in your calculator anyways. And you might be saying right now, like, Mr. Brea, why'd you make us do it? Why'd you have us number crunch the whole way? It's good to learn how to use your calculator, and it's, it's good to um, try and crunch this out by hand. I get to use the whole back in my day thing. Well, back in my day, I had to do this. We didn't have the TI-84s. And you can start to imagine, how cumbersome any homework assignment turned into, right? Because this was only 12 data points. Imagine when I had 100 data points trying to calculate a standard deviation. And you know the deal, you make one small mistake and then you're done at that point, okay? All right, 
Now scooting up through here, the last thing we see is that if you're talking about the parameter, the population variance, we use this symbol. All right. it's, it's actually called sigma. It's a lowercase sigma. So this is lowercase sigma in the Greek alphabet. We just saw uppercase sigma. That's that capital E looking thing. So if you have sigma squared, that's the population variance. And if you have sigma all by itself, that's the population standard deviation. And again, the only ways to actually find these are to uh, run a census. And I just want to make a note here that when you look at your calculator, you're never going to use the line that says sigma. So never use this line, okay? You will only ever use the S of X line, all right? So we'll use the 125, not the 120 number. Okay, hey gang, we're gonna take a look at example five, but this time I wanna do it solely on my calculator. I want us to start to see how we can use our calculator kind of like a spreadsheet if you've ever used Excel on a PC or numbers on a Mac. And I just want you to start to feel out how that spreadsheet um, number crunching works. Because maybe you'll use a spreadsheet at some point in your life. So we're back with this, this example where we had um, the 12 students randomly selected and we were taking the number of Facebook friends each of them had. So we were directed with calculate the mean, median, and deviations. So let's start with the mean and median. Anytime you want to find the mean or median, we're going to do one var stats. So I'm going to do a little data entry, and then let's crunch one var stats. So let me go into my list and start moving things around. Okay, so if I look at it right now, I can see that the first blank cell is in the 13th position. That's good. I do have 12 data values. So I'm just going to hope I didn't make a typo. Um, if I did make a typo, it'll show up in one bar stats. If I don't get exactly 211.917, I'll know I did something wrong. So let me go back to my home screen and let's do one bar stats. So stat, we'll go to calc. We're going to do option one. And I want to look at the data. I have an L1. Yeah, so there's my mean, 211.917. You can see here, this is the total of all of the Facebook friends between the 12 people. This is the squares of those data values. And then we added them together. Um, but what I want us to take a look at, we got 211.917. Let's go down here. The other one, there's the median at 176. So you can see um, we've got those numbers, 211.917. 176. Great. Now, the next part of this question says find the deviations for the data set, right? So again, I always want to be careful to answer every question asked of me. Okay, so I need to find deviations. And in stats, when we deviate, we deviate from the mean, right? So this first student had 420 Facebook friends. That wasn't the mean, right? The mean was 211 or pretty close to 212. So this student deviated from the mean. We need to figure out what that number is. This student had 199 Facebook friends. That wasn't exactly the mean value either. Uh, so we need to figure out how much that student deviated from the mean. And we do that by subtracting the mean from every value of our variable. And you remember crunching these by hand, right? Let me show you how you can now do this in your calculator. So let's hit stat. Let's go into edit. And theoretically, what I want to do is I want to take every data value in L1 and I want to subtract 211.917 for it. And I want to do that all the way through. So your calculator is capable of doing this. And, and so are spreadsheets. So like I said, Excel for PCs, numbers on Macs, those are the two most common um, spreadsheet programs, or at least the two most common that I know. So if we want to do this on our calculator, go over to L2. But I, I don't want you in the first cell of L2. Hit the up arrow key so that L2 itself has a black background. So what we're going to do is we're going to define this list, L2, in terms of L1. Because again, I would like to take every number in L1 and subtract the mean. That's how we find deviations in stats. So I will take every number in L1 and I will subtract 211.917. 
And when I take every number in L1 and subtract 211.917, I'm going to find those deviations. Now in a moment, I'm going to hit Enter. And when I hit Enter, you're going to see L2 auto-populate. So here we go, right? And then what numbers are you seeing? There's a deviation, 208.083, negative 12.917. It rounds off here, but if you scroll down, you can see the actual value. So there are all of my deviations, right? So I'm just number crunching. All right, I'm gonna clear this out because this is getting a little crowded. All right, so I've answered, or I, if I copied these from my calculator to my paper, I would have answered the first question. What is the mean, median, and deviations? The next question says, what is the average deviation? So if you ever wanna find the average of something, you add all of these deviations up and you divide by the number of deviations. So I wanna add all of these 12 numbers up and then divide by 12. And we talked about this when we were doing it by hand. Statisticians ran into our problem. Because we had positives and negatives, things canceled out and added to zero. And, and we saw that by hand, and I want you to see it play out in the calculator, and I wanna show you a new calculator function where you could command your calculator instead of doing this by hand or on your calculation screen, you can just tell your calculator, hey, add everything up in L2, okay? So let's go back to our home screen. And instead of going into our stat button, we're gonna now hit second in stat, okay? This is our list menu. You can see the word list is in blue. So this is the names of your lists. You could um, use this to name L1, L2, L3. I think it's easier to just hit second, the number one, second, the number two. Um, but I want us to go over to math, okay? So in terms of math, I want you to see option five. There's a sum function in there. So I can either scroll down to five and hit enter, or I can just hit five, all right? And what I would like to do is I would like to add everything in L2. So I'm gonna tell my calculator, hey, all of my deviations are in L2. I've been asked to find the average deviation. Whenever you want the average of anything, you add up all the data values, divide by the number of observations. So I wanna add up L2, and in a moment I'll divide this by four, not by four, excuse me, I'll divide it by 12. But look at my sum, pretty close to zero. If I hadn't rounded the decimal to 917 here for the mean, if I had kept on going, this summation would have gotten closer and closer to zero. Now, when I add these numbers, if I want the average, I still have to divide by the number of observations. So when I divide by 12, we get this negative 3.33 e to the negative four. And this is our first look together at the calculator's version of scientific notation. So what your calculator is actually saying is this, this number is negative 3.33 times 10 to the negative four, okay? And if you remember from our chapter two math interlude, we spoke a little bit about scientific notation and, and that's what we're dealing with here. So we've got negative 3.33 times 10 to the negative four and just reviewing that idea on, uh, excuse me, from your, your math interlude, I would take 3.33 and I would move the decimal place four units to the left because I had a negative exponent, okay? So I'm gonna take this decimal point and go one, two, three, four units left, and put zeros as placeholders, okay? So really what's happening is we find out that the average deviation is about zero and that's a problem, right? So statisticians had to find a workaround and they did find a workaround. So let's go talk about that workaround. Here's what we did. We defined something called a variance. Right? Instead of just adding the deviations, we squared the deviations, then added them, then divided by n minus one. And yes, this is a little bit quirky, right? We're not dividing by 12 anymore. We're gonna divide by 11. I'm happy to explain why we divide by 12, excuse, by 11 and not 12 um, for the standard deviation. I'm not gonna do it inside the class because it's a longer conversation. Um, it, it involves a whole bunch of math that I would have to explain, and it's not worth our time just inside class. Um, just believe me, you divide by n minus one, not n. If you ever wanna know the real reason, come to my office hours, shoot me an email, we can totally chat about it. I linked a Khan Academy video, because they do a pretty good job explaining it. All right, but let's, let's work this on our calculator. So I'm gonna use my lists all over the place here. So let me clear this screen, I'll clear my, key pressing history. Let's go back into our lists and I want us to take L3. I want us to define L3 to be something. 
what I would like to do with each of these deviations is square them. Right? And right now my deviations are in L2. So I would like to define L3 to be my deviations, which are in L2 squared. That's ultimately what I want to do. I want to take every number in L2 and square it and then drop it into L3. And again, as soon as I hit enter, that list is going to auto populate. So there are all of these gigantic numbers, right? You see them in my spreadsheet over here. Oops, excuse me. And you see them in my calculator over here. All right. So I've done the first part of this, this numerator. I squared these, these deviations, right? If I'm going with PEMDAS, I'm going to do exponents first. The next thing I want to do on this numerator is add all of those squared deviations together. So I want to take every number in L3 and add them. So I'm going to use that same function I did before. So let's go back into our list menu. We'll go over to the math drop down menu and I want option five. I want to sum. And this time I would like to sum L3. I want to sum the squares of my deviations because that's how my variance is defined. So let me sum everything in L3 and hit enter. And you see it's a gigantic number, right? Because we're summing the squares of the deviations. In order to find the variance, the last thing I want to do is divide by sample size minus 1. So our n in this case is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. Let me divide by 11. And there it is. That number is our variance. It's gigantic, but it is our variance. And your variance has the symbol s squared. It is the square of the standard deviation. So if you ever want to go from variance down to standard deviation, you need to use the square root symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit second. Oops, excuse me. Let me show you where the square root is. Um, if you look over the log key, there's this x squared button. And in blue, there's this little square root symbol. So I just need to hit second and the squared button, and that'll call up the square root function. So you have a couple of options. All right, you can actually type this in. So I'm happy to type in 15873.7197. Um, and I can hit enter, okay? And that just takes a little while to do, but you see it pop up there. I've got my 125.99 Facebook friends for my standard deviation. Again, the units of all of your statistics are the units of your problem. I mean, these are just numbers that are representing that data set. Um, I want to show you the way I tend to do this because it can be a little cumbersome to enter all of these digits in, and you might transpose them or miss one. So let me clear this out and start this problem or this process again. All right, so I have all of my squares of my deviations in L3. So I typically do this. I'll hit second stat. Say, hey, calculator, can you add up L3, divide it by 11, okay, there's my variance, and then I want to just square root this number. So your calculator has a, a built-in function for that, and I want to show it to you. If you look over this negative symbol right here, you're going to see the word ANS, and that stands for answer. Now, it's in blue, so if I hit second and the negative sign and close that parentheses, what that's saying is... I will take the square root of whatever your previous answer was. And so by doing that, by hitting second and the negative sign, I can basically tell my calculator to take the square root of 15,873.7197 without having to write the digits myself. I don't have to input them. I won't be making a typo on those. It's faster. I hit enter, and there's my standard deviation. Okay, So we got all of that. All right. One other thing I want to show you, I want us to go back, I want you to keep this number in mind, 125.99, okay? Let's go back and run one variable stats from the beginning. So let's hit stat, go to calc, and this is off of our original data in L1. Just feed it L1 for right now, okay? So this was the very first thing we did in this video. If I hit enter, there was my mean, there was the sum of all my values, of my variable, the squares of them. But do you see this fourth line down here? This awesome line where your calculator just straight up gives you the standard deviation so you don't have to do all of this spreadsheet shenanigans. Right, so there it is, 125.99. So yes, you can go through this whole rigmarole each time. And I, I get to tell the story that back in my day, I had to do, do this stuff. I mean, you can imagine trying to actually calculate the standard deviation 
I, I remember my homework um, packets that I would turn in were so long because I was just number crunching the whole time. And you can also imagine like you make one small numerical error and then the rest of your stuff is messed up from there on out. Um, we didn't have this technology um, back when I was doing it. And I'm not that old. It's just we didn't have it or, or my, well, I didn't know we had it and my teacher wouldn't let us use it. I'm never going to take technology away from you guys. So here it is, 125.99. And again, if you're saying like, well, then why do you even make us do it the long way? Because I have to, because I'm a teacher. And I, I also want you to see how you can use lists and manipulate them like spreadsheets. I think that's a good thing to just have under your belt. You should know as many tools as you can about your calculator so you can make it do all that work for you. Um, this symbol here is the population standard deviation, or at least what your calculator believes is the population standard deviation. Um, I won't go into this too much, only to say that we're never going to use this sigma line. Don't use it. It's taking your the squares of your variances, the sum of the squares of your variances. It's taking this numerator and dividing it by n as opposed to n minus 1. We're not going to use this number in this class, so ignore that line always. Um, there will be one exception in chapter 4. There will be a, a, a one version of a problem where we do use this line, and that's only because the s line is blank. So always use SX, never use sigma of X, okay? And with that, we're almost out of here, but I do wanna show you one other thing. So let me clear this out. I wanna show you one other place that you can find the standard deviation and the variance if you want to. So let me clear my screen. Let's go back into second and stat, and let's go over to math. All right, so as we start to piece these out, right, you can find the minimum of your list, uh, the minimum value in a list, max, mean, median, we did the sum. You can take the product of two lists if you want, but do you see option seven here where it says standard deviation? Right, here's another way to get standard deviation, and I'll click that in a moment, but I also wanna point out, here's our down arrow key. So I have another menu item, at least one more. If I click down, oops, I guess I went too far. This thing's lagging a little bit. Uh, so we got standard deviation, we've got variance here. So we can do both of these. So let's take a look at standard deviation. So I'll go up here, all right, and I want to find the standard deviation of my original data that's in L1. If I do that, there we go, 125.9909509. You could take this number and you could just hit the squared button and there you would find the variance, right? So there's a second way of finding the variance. We got the spreadsheet way, we got using your calculator way. Uh, now we have a couple of ways on our calculator. I wanna show you yet another way on your calculator. So I could also have gone directly with second stat math. If I had gone to that bottom menu item, that eighth menu item, I could have also just said, hey calculator, can you find me the variance? And there we go. So you've got a bunch of ways to find standard deviation or variance on your calculator. And really, the, the, one of the important things that I want you to remember is the relationship between standard deviation and variance. That variance is the square of the standard deviation, or you could say that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So remembering how those two statistics relate to each other is important, and your calculator can get you either one, no problem. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.